friends, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I am going to be focusing on some new products at Sephora in this video. I've got um, a new Natasha Denona palette, a new Charlotte Tilbury uh, face palette, the ABH concealer. Some of these things where I'm not maybe in 100% review mode right now, but I'm trying it out and I thought I'd just take you along for the ride as I did a full face. In the spirit of using Sephora stuff, I'm going to also fill in the blanks with some other things that are also available there. So for my primer, I'm going to use my Huda Beauty. It's the water jelly primer, and I'm going to also pair that with my foundation. This is called the Faux Filter Luminous Matte. I actually really enjoy this foundation. Great coverage, great staying power. I haven't worn it in a little while, so I kind of wanted to come back to it for a bit. So here's the primer. Just 100% clear gel type of primer. Um, to me, it feels a little bit like, you know how I have that hard candy primer that's a dupe for the milk gripping primer or whatever, that kind of greenish looking primer? This feels kind of like that, only a little bit thinner. So got that all over, real easy to blend in. And look at me, I just went and put it back right after I used it. And then here I wear this foundation in Custard 220N. So yeah, starting off with the not so new, but we will move into the new, I promise. So I'm gonna give myself a full pump of that and I'll begin by just kind of dabbing it around. And then I'm gonna use a dampened beauty blender to blend that in. And you're gonna see the coverage on this is quite nice. It really does a good job of being super full coverage, but yet doesn't look like really dry by the time you get it all blended in. But that was just one pump and see how potent that is. Another Huda foundation that I really love is the stick as well. In fact, that might even be my tip top favorite. Oh, I just, I love the way that foundation looks. I always do. Next up, we've got this ABH concealer and it is bigger than all the other concealers. Like they just made a, a taller tube. It's pretty thick all the way around. Um, and this is called the Magic Touch Concealer and I got it in shade four and it is pretty light. Like I could have probably gone a little bit deeper on it, but um, it's very brightening on me and I'm just going to show you how it goes on here with just a couple of little dots right here, a little bit out here, some around the nose. Um, and I don't want to wait too long to blend this in because to me, I feel like this sets up a little faster than um, some of the other ones I've been playing with lately like the one size concealer. This seems slightly thicker than that and like it just wants to set in a little faster. But as you can see, the coverage is really good. I mean, I think it's on par with all the full coverage concealers, really. I just don't have any complaints about what this is doing coverage wise. And as you can see, a shade like this really brightens me a ton too. But I didn't apply a bunch and it just, it does look a, a little bit thicker on. And I don't know if part of that is just the fact that like it sets in quicker. It just looks a little more obvious on the skin. Like right away if I look up close, I can kind of just see it in those lines a bit more. More than what you say? Well, the one that really comes to mind is that new one size concealer, the Butter Silk Concealer. That one has incredible coverage, but it manages to be even thinner than the consistency of this or Shape Tape or really most anything I've tried. So that's why I feel like that one's kind of uniquely good. I'm gonna keep playing with this one. Like I'm, I'm not writing it off just yet. I just think it has a tendency toward being a little bit thicker, setting a little bit more quickly on the skin. And yeah, I think that just makes it seem maybe a little more heavy, you know? Here is another new thing that I picked up. There's this new uh, setting powder from Makeup Forever. It's the Ultra HD setting powder. And I got it in 1.0 uh, vanilla. And it does come with this nice little sponge that's kind of like shaped. And I've applied it with that some as well. I think it gives you kind of like a thicker application of the powder. But they had a little diagram and it was comparing like what this does compared to the invisible HD, you know, loose setting powder. Kind of want to pull that up now. <laughs> so yeah, in comparison to just the regular 
Ultra HD Loose Finishing Powder. This is called the Ultra Matte Setting Powder. Compared to that, they say this has more coverage, more staying power, more shine control, where the other one um, has more sort of points filled in is under blurring. So they call this 24 hour shine free matte finish, blurring micro fine powder with no flashback. So I thought, you know, I want to try that. That sounds pretty good. And I do like it. Um, I love the packaging. It's got that little a top like this where it just immediately fills in those sifter holes but if you give it a little shake um, you get just a little more powder out like it, it sort of comes to the forefront you know so then when you open it up there's something there so I'm just gonna use my small tapered brush from elf and I'm gonna use this to lightly set my under eye um, I've experimented with this on top of a few different concealers so far and I do think it's enhanced the staying power of my makeup overall, too, because I've put it, like, on my entire T-zone area. But it is super matte. If I get some on my nose here, I'm putting kind of a generous amount in that area because I know I'm in for, like, hot cars and picking up and dropping off today and all that. Got to defend the skin against all the sweat. And see, I think that looks really good. I can tell an even more mattified effect on the T-zone especially. I think the under eye already looked pretty matte after that concealer. But I'm liking this powder so far. I feel like it's going to take me a little more use to really think about whether I think it's leaps and bounds better than um, some of the other loose powders I've been using lately that I love, like the Believe Beauty one or the Wet n Wild Photo Focus. Um, I mean, this is certainly more expensive and it's got some great claims. And I'm not saying it's bad, but I just, you know, I'm not sure if it's that much better. Okay, I finally caved and I got the Charlotte Tilbury Nudegasm Face Palette. Um, I really like the look of this on the website and the only thing that was making me feel a little bit like, oh, I'm not sure whether I should go for it is because I had another face palette that sort of had this vibe to it in the past and I sort of doubted the pigmentation sometimes so I wondered is this going to really come out pigmented but um it definitely is like it really shows up on the skin I enjoy the look of everything I can really see this blush I like the contour colors so I'm going to use it all and let you see how it all goes on they call this super glow super sculpt soft sculpt and multi-glow right here so like two shades of contour blush and highlight basically so I'm going to take Take my e.l.f. complexion brush here and I'm going to go into the lighter one at first so you can see what this is like. This really to me looks like the tone of what you get in Film Star Bronze and Glow and this is going to show on my skin although it's going to be very subtle and really cool you know. We're not talking like warm tan vibes out of that one. It's going to be very subtle. I'm just going to do this also here and you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Like it's present but it's very very soft and light. I still see it you know it's still making an impact. Okay so there's that. Now we're going to deepen it up a little bit more with this shade. Oh, I really love the tone of that. It's an interesting texture on these powders because like again I'm not saying they're not pigmented they do show up but like I go into them kind of like that instead of just a gentle dab on top of them which is what I might do with let's say it was Lorac or something you know I would be doing no more than a gentle touch to the product and here you know I do kind of swirl in they're more firm and I think they're really trying to keep the imprints that they put in and not lose those immediately so they're more of a firmly pressed product but see how that contour really does show up if you start going into the deep too and suddenly it's like no maybe I I didn't eat those parmesan bread bites last night no <laughs> And those to me seem very much matte, by the way. I don't see any glow out of the bronzer shades, but you do have some glow here. So let's do that blush. This is so pretty. I really love the blush shade. And I'm just, I'm so satisfied with how it comes off on the skin, you know? I thought I was going to be more like... I don't know. <laughs> For some reason, I was willing to give this palette a chance, but I knew it could burn me, I guess is what I'm saying. Look at that. I love that tone. Doing so much more than what I thought. 
but it's pricey, you know? I'm still not sure this whole palette's totally worth it. But yeah, this blush has a little bit of glow in it. And I just adore that tone. I think it's so pretty. And the highlighter is gorgeous too. So I'm using, this is just my Real Techniques setting brush. And we have been very matte. But look at this, like, boom, boom, boom. It is so pretty on the cheeks. See what I mean, guys? Every time I use it, I'm just kind of really into it. We need some setting sprays. Today it's going to be my Urban Decay All Nighter. Locked in. Now I gotta say the under eyes are looking really heavy. Um, I didn't feel like I applied that much of the loose powder. Um, but I'm kind of, I'm blaming the concealer a little bit more on that just because I feel like I don't know, it, it's given me a thicker, heavier feel on there than some other things. Okay, for brows, um, I am gonna use this new pomade from Benefit. I didn't buy this, this came in PR. I have it in shade four, it's actually warm deep brown. I didn't realize it was warm, but it says full pigment brow pomade. A neat little packaging thing that they did with this is that, do you see these little like, almost looks like stair steps coming down right there? Um, it's a little wiping area where you can wipe off excess from your brush because you pretty much anytime you go into a pomade You always have that moment where it's like you need to get rid of a little bit So I thought that was smart and this is just their angled brow brush Which is not really anything super different. So like if you have elf's brow brush You can use that it just has the spoolie on one end and the angle on the other So I picked up some product and then I'm kind of wiping it along that edge and I will just start filling in. It's pretty dark. They sent me another shade that was a little bit lighter and I am trying not to get into that so maybe I can, you know, donate it or whatever. But if I'm controlled enough with this, it works fine. I just don't think I am loving it above and beyond other things like the um, Maybelline Tattoo Studio. It's a great, great brow pomade. It actually has a little more hold in it, it feels like. And then there's the e.l.f. Lock-On Brow and Liner Cream, which is really super nice. So this is coming up against some drugstore faves for sure. So see that? There's one filled in brow, and I just feel like it's very thick fill in, <laughs> you know? And I don't know how to really keep from, from getting that effect with a lot of pomades. Like, you just get a very opaque looking fill. Yesterday, I, um, I've had the kids all by myself all weekend long because Bub was in like a two-day golf tournament. Love that. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm glad for him that he got to go do that. I know he had a great time, but I got this idea to go to Campus Lake, which is um, on the SIU campus. We're not too far from that. So we went there and packed a lunch, ate it at the picnic table, and we're walking up to the picnic table, and there's this whole big group of ducks, like some beautiful mallard ducks, and Bubba, one of his stuffed animals, is a duck, like a, a realistic looking, you know, with the green head and everything. Um, my mom's friend Francine had given that to us a long time ago. Anyways, it's one of his big three stuffies. You know, we've got his dog, which is Papa, his cat, which is Meow Meow, and then Duck. And when he says Duck, he sometimes doesn't always do the D, and it comes out, Uck, Uck, Uck. And so we were walking up and we see all these ducks. He's like, Uck, Uck, Uck. Needless to say, it was hard to keep him seated during that meal. And he gets up and the ducks kind of like in their big chunk just sort of shift away from us. But that was really cool. And they've got just a really neat area there where you can walk out on sidewalks that kind of go out over the water a little bit. We just hadn't been out there in a while, so that was fun. And then we're walking kind of into the forested area and a guy comes along and he's got two actual Saluki dogs. See, SIU's mascot is the Salukis, and Saluki dogs are, I mean, you just don't see them about every day. Like, they're kind of a slender, beautiful dog. And he's like, you want to pet him? And so we did. He was so nice, and dogs were beautiful, and the girls were super pumped that they got to do that. Okay, so I've got that in. I felt like it took me a long time, honestly, because I was just trying not to over apply. And doesn't that seem backwards? It's like it took me extra long to not over apply the product, but I just felt like I was having to be so careful with it. Um, I don't want to add any extra color to this, so I'm just going to use this Believe Beauty Clear Gel to set it. 
again. Um, I feel like pomades should set better, you know, like the Maybelline Tattoo Studio really does. Like if you're putting that texture in the brows, shouldn't it, shouldn't it set them a little bit more effectively? Getting them a little more fluffed up and slightly more natural looking perhaps. Then I'm gonna prime my lids today. I'm using Milani Eyeshadow Primer and we're gonna play with this Natasha Denona Retro Palette. I wonder why they call it the Retro Palette. Like, I don't know, but there were tones here that I just couldn't deny. I mean, sometimes I do deny the Natasha Denona palettes. I see them come out and I'm like, mm, I don't know, or I get them sent to me in PR, but I'm not necessarily clamoring, you know, to buy it myself, see it and need it, you know? But this one I just felt like was gonna be right up my alley. It's got this pretty blush pink color and then <laughs> no one is shocked. <laughs> no one is surprised that this feels like my cup of tea. Although, I will say I haven't been like super amazed by the looks I've done so far. And this shade right here, let me tell you something, this looks like this should be deep and rich and anchor a lot of looks, but it actually shows up with so much red. By the time this shears out on the eyes, it really pinky red intensity. And it's turned some looks that I've done like way more on the pink side than I was sort of going for. So I don't know if this is really panning out to be my favorite berry palette or the ultimate berry palette. But today I think I'm gonna stick to a few more just matte shades. I know that there are some shimmers in here like psychedelic and glitz. Like I put those on with my finger and they really pop, you know, like I used that on my lid the other day. And it's interesting, it's like a real powdery feeling micro glitter shimmer and it, it looks cool. And then you got a couple of shades that are a little more cool and and stony, a slight bit more warmth over here on this side. I mean, I haven't disliked the looks, but I haven't been quite as like enamored by this as I thought I might be. But today I kind of want to stick with the mattes and see if I can get an all matte look that I would love. So for starters, I'm gonna use Nude Mauve right down here. It really does show on the eyes a little bit more than like what you see in the pan. To me, it kind of looks like standard beige in the pan and then you put it on your eyes and you can really start to see like, yeah, okay, nude mauve. <laughs> it's a very soft looking mauve. So I'm really trying to get this all over the crease, the entire crease zone, inner corner. It truly is more intense than you expect. I mean, guys, it's that shade right there doing quite a bit. Then I'm gonna take Amara right down here. So this is kind of a, pretty rosy shade. I'm gonna add that to my crease as well. Sometimes, I don't know, I get the feeling that these mattes, they're nice and really pigmented, but I feel like they wanna cling in place a bit more than, let's say, a Too Faced matte. And it may be, you know, that the pigment is so concentrated that it just kind of sticks and lands, you know, like right where you put it. But that's the addition of Amara right in there. And then I'm going to do a little bit of Groove. So this matte right here, this kind of grapey looking color, I'm gonna apply that uh, with a flat brush actually, right out here. See, really rich. I do love this tone. So because of its darkness, you know, this is gonna kind of be our deepest crease type color. So I'm really making that effort to get it up into the crease and we will blend that out further in a second. But first off, it's just about the padding. Okay, and then using that brush, same brush that I used with the crease stuff, I'm gonna blend and that color is gonna sort of sheer out and really start mixing in with the rest. And then at this point, I'm gonna just take a bare brush and help myself work over the outside a bit more. And also maybe take just a little bit more of Nude Mauve and let that really come up above what we're doing because that went directly into the crease when we started. And now I think a bit more of that can come up and around everything. Then I'm taking a little Nude Mauve again and we're gonna ease our way out of that depth on the lid. 
So nude mauve right in the middle, and then we're going to go to something even lighter in a second. But we're just going to let that kind of help us come off of the deeper shade. And then I'm going to use this shade called Mod right up here. Very, very light, um, kind of like white with maybe the teeniest hint of blush pink in there. And that actually looks really pretty, even brightening up the inner corner. Sometimes we don't think of mattes as always serving that function, but it does look pretty doing that. Get a lot of excess tapping off with that one. So you're just letting that brighten the whole area. So then I'm going to take Groove with a small pointed brush. We have remained all matte for this look. Sorry if you wanted to see some of the shimmer, but I've just, you know, I've played with some of those and I really just wanted to see how satisfied I could be with an all matte eye out of this palette. And I'm pretty much liking it, but I'm not like over the top impressed by the textures of the mattes. Like I think they are all out super pigmented, but that pigmentation can be kind of fussy sometimes. And you know, Viseart, there's another brand with just off the charts pigmented colors, but I find those mattes a little easier to work with at times. And I just feel like some of the different colors in here have given me some challenges that I'm not really accustomed to. At this point, I really think I'm going to want a liner that's sort of light in the lower inner rim because we've got all this like rosiness and berry going on around the eye. So that was my ABH Duo brightening pencil there. And then we're going to do a little liner. I think I will do a wing today and maybe some wispies lashes. And I feel like I've taken a long time with this look, so I'm just going to throw those on and then I'll be right back. Alrighty, friends, so here's the finished look on the eyes. Nothing I used was really new, so I didn't feel like I had to totally include it in here, but I just did a winged liner. I used this um, Too Faced Better Than Sex liner pen, and um, it does just the same thing that my Wet n Wild Breakup Proof does. So I went all across the upper lash line there, um, put on some Essence Mascara, popped on these Ardell Wispies lashes, and did a little uh, mascara on the bottom. But overall, with this palette, I guess here's what I've figured out. I think I like, I personally prefer, prefer more of an earthy berry type of look. So think Lorac Unzipped, you know, there's more of a burgundy kind of berry vibe and it's going into like rose golds and maybe some bronzy colors, but it's just a little more earthy. And in this palette, things go very pink, um, with the exception of like these two colors here that you have that are more of like a stone color and like a deep sort of maybe charcoal mixed with brown in this one. A lot of the rest is very pinky and there are shades that will sheer out, like even the one that I started to use in the crease and like outer corner today, um, shades that will sheer out and look very reddish pink, I think. And so it's not that I don't like it, like I, I like this look, I think it turned out pretty. I do think some of these mattes are just so pigmented, the pigment really clings as you apply it and it makes it slightly more difficult to put on. So I'm not doing backflips over this one, um, it is a color scheme that I like, but not maybe as much as you might have thought, I guess. Honestly, this is probably my favorite looking look that I've done yet from this palette, but still, I kind of prefer the, the more burgundy uh, tones of berry as opposed to the more pinky ones that sheer out in a really like pinky reddish way and then their supporting cast members are all like pink shimmers and stuff like that. It's not a must for me. And we're going to wrap this up with another Sephora thing that I've had on hand for a little while. It's called Lip Blush, and I have it in the shade 09. And this is kind of an interesting feeling product. It feels kind of moussey on the lips. Um, it does not set for long wear. Okay, you should know that. Um, but it's interesting because you can wear it at first, and like I don't even see a lot of transferring off onto my coffee cup and stuff. Oops. Like it feels super soft and smooth and also a little bit thick, but in a really comfortable way. But to me, it's like a matte lip mousse or something. It does not set for total long wear. The texture is such that it's not going to goop all over things, I guess is my point. It wouldn't like 
cling to a mug the way a gloss finish product would, but at the same time it doesn't last real well because I had this on looking just like this yesterday. And by about 10.30, I wanna say, and I hadn't eaten that much at that point, but it was pretty much gone. So it's pretty well at last, it feels really good. Like if you were wanting to do something where you're like, okay, I want that pretty matte look, I'm willing to reapply, but I want it to feel super comfortable. This is so comfortable. The lips feel really soft and almost balmy as I like press them together. And it really continues to feel that way. But you know, there's always give and take with these matte lip colors because if they feel too comfortable, you know they're not lasting too long. And that is kind of the case with this. I think it's a beautiful color though. I love this rosy shade. I think it looks pretty with this particular eye look. Again, if you don't mind reapplying, it's the kind of thing that because it doesn't set with its own like sort of layer on the lips the way a lot of liquid lip colors do, you can go back at this and it's gonna feel perfectly fine and comfortable to do so. But I know there are a lot of people who want to just kind of go throughout their day and think, okay, I've got this one lip color on. It's not budging. It's not going anywhere. Um, I don't have to think about it. So like a super stay matte ink or a matte ink crayon are definitely products in that category. This is a really unique thing in that it's so matte. It's so comfortable, but it really doesn't get me through more than just a few hours. But yeah, this is my look today, my friends. I feel really glam with this, you know, like I've got the full coverage on, um, I've got some glow on the cheeks, I think the eye look is pretty, I like the way it coordinates with the lips, like I said. Um, really outside of like an old fave that was used in this video, like I really enjoy this foundation from Huda, but outside of that, like I would say the new thing that I really liked the best was the Nudegasm palette from Charlotte Tilbury. I just, I, I like the tones in here. I like that it kind of shows up on the skin more than I had anticipated. And it is the kind of color tone family where, you know, this is looking good with really a totally different color scheme on eyes and lips. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't get too thrown by the fact that that's a peachy looking blush there because I feel like I apply it. And I mean, you saw when that went on, it just looked healthy and radiant and nice and it didn't really scream color color and I think that's what they mean by nudegasm. So I don't see it interfering with other color schemes that you want to wear. It's not like the loudest peach thing ever. I feel like I need to brush up this brow a bit more. Yeah the brow pomade like okay but not knocking my socks off. This ABH concealer continuing to work with this as well as my Makeup Forever loose powder but what I've been able to tell so far is that this is a little bit thicker than um, some of the other options out there and it just it sets up faster on the skin. So anyway that's all from me today guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to clean up these things that I've used. I'm going to put them away now. <laughs> if you saw my last video you know what I'm talking about and yeah I will see you again real soon. Thank you so much. I love you. Bye.